Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, Chip Walters here and today we are going to talk about a workflow going from NURBS and or SketchUp into Unity and we're going to build our own texture maps and UV maps in 3D Coat uh, as it has a really nice PBR workflow. PBR meaning physically based rendering or PBS is what Unity uses physically based shaders. So let's get started. Right here we see uh, uh, a set of cubes and uh, we've got a blue one, a green one, and a red one. And I'm going to just select these and I'm going to export those. And I'm going to call it Tower. And I'll make an OBJ out of it. And now I'm going to go uh, directly into 3D Coat. And I want to paint the UV map, map. I'll open up Tower. Now this is an interesting dialog here. We always want to put in no center step. That way if I ever add something to the Tower model, it, it'll come in at the right place. Now sometimes it thinks like it comes in at the right place if you import the OBJ, which it will. But if you save it out as a 3D coat model and then re-import it, it won't be in the right space unless this is checked. So always check this. Secondly, notice that it identified that we have red, green, and blue as materials in the actual uh, MOE file. So the reason for that is that we set over here, we set this object to red, this object to green, and this object to blue. So that's why that was. Now it's going to say, I want to create three different UV maps, one for red, one for green, one for blue. Now there's a bug uh, 3D code that this only works if they're very simple cubes and I'm going to show you the workaround for that later on but for instance but for now let's just go ahead and do this okay so we imported these files there uh, each had a 1k texture map um, and uh, here they come in so they don't they're not colored or anything like that but we do notice that over here in in this we notice we have a red channel a green channel and a blue channel these are not channels I should say these are different UV maps right so if I go into the UV map room right now I'll see that as you can see one of these is one of these is bright and the other two are dimmed well that's because this one is the red one now I also notice that the, pre the preview over here is really pretty even though it automatically unwrapped in this particular case very very simple objects the unwrapping didn't work correctly now most of the times auto unwrapping does work correctly but this time it didn't so I'm going to fix that I'm going to clear clusters clear seams and <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna go to this auto map and notice it broke out every every side into its own map okay now I'm gonna go over here to red I'm gonna go to green I'm gonna uh, I, I don't need to clear clusters and clear seams but I can just go directly right into auto map and it'll do it for me so it did there um, if I had this pack UV it's gonna set those up. it'll it may rearrange those I can shuffle the pack it'll arrange them even differently so you can just keep doing that uh, if you like <clears throat> um, so it gets you an idea of how, how to move those around so let's go into the blue and uh, let's auto map that and now we'll go back into the paint and we'll say yes we've changed something in UV room we can't undo it okay so now that once we get there we have this now notice there's this little <clears throat> texture I, I can't figure out why that does that I think it might be a rendering problem because if I save this, let's just save it as a tower. Okay, and then let's open it. And now it's fixed. So I don't really understand what that is about, but that's what it is. Obviously now, <clears throat> as I'm using this, I go to my smart materials and I can click a smart material and uh, just fill it on each one of these and let's pick another smart material and fill it and another one let's see Oops, this one has a curvature component to it so it's building a curvature channel and pick it okay so now <clears throat> here are our three materials if I go into our texture editor we'll see that the red, which is the top one, looks like that. The green is green. 
and the blue is now red. So these are the, these are actual smart materials for that. So when I save these out, when I save it out, each one will have a separate UV map exported with it. So if I say save, export objects and textures, let's find a place to output these. Let's create a, uh, a new file folder, call it test, and open this up. And we'll call it uh, tower, save. And we're going to export this. And this, in our case, we'll say a Unity standard workflow. And let's change these from TG to something we're going to be able to look at. Ping, 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 and ping. OK. And we should we get? We'll hit the OK. Now it's going to actually go out, and it's going to export separate UV maps for everything. And that's done. And let's go ahead and uh, open that up. And here they are. <clears throat> And you can see we have one object. We didn't set, create separate objects, but we have one object, but we have separate materials for them, right? Okay, so uh, now we want to go into Unity, and we're going to, uh, in Unity, we're going to load this load this up, and I'm going to show you the, the easy way and the hard way. So let's go into Unity, and <clears throat> let's... Uh, import a new asset and we'll go down to our test folder uh, so here we go oh, there and we'll import this object okay and <clears throat> here's our object now and all I need to do is drag it right in here in the middle okay we'll see that we've got here these different objects one two and three and we go to materials and we have object one material and as you can see they did not import and the reason why is we just imported the object so let's go back and let's redo this let's take this and hit delete it'll delete it from here let's delete it from here and let's delete the materials and uh, let's go back in here again and this time I'm going to open up the browser Okay, and I'm going to move this over here, and I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to drag it into test. Okay, and now when I drag the, the object in, you can now see that we have the actual materials as planned. So the key there is that we did, needed to make sure that we imported more than just the object. We need to order import that whole folder of stuff. So uh, that's the hard way. So let's look at the easy way. Let's go back into 3D code and let's save this out file. Save as, and I'm going to call this tower. And I'm going to put it back in, the, in here. So it's tower. Okay. And now let's go back into Unity. Now, uh, and let's take, and I'm going to delete this tower again. And delete all these. Oops, let's take it here. There we go. That's a way well, you can't drag it. Uh, this time I'm going to import new asset. And instead of the tower object, let's go back up and let's get very top here. Okay, so we can notice that we have this tower3b.jpg, but we don't have our tower.3b in this folder. And if I look here, I, see I got all files selected. It doesn't show it. So what do we do? Do we lose it? What happened to it? Well, actually what happened is you can't import a 3D code asset. Uh, even though it says all files, it means all files it recognizes, and it doesn't recognize the 3D code asset. So that means we have to just drag and drop it. So let's do that. Um, uh, before we do that, let me just mention that over here, <clears throat> I've downloaded in the asset store, I've downloaded this very nifty, this very nifty uh, 3D code to Unity plugin. So that's already here. Well, let's see. Let's find out if it is or not. Uh, well, actually, I'll just import it. 
Oh, see, it's already in project. Okay, so good. So let's go back to the scene and uh, let's now, instead of importing it this way, let's go ahead and drag and drop it through the actual finder. So here we are. This is uh, our in the uh, Explorer. I'm going to go to my downloads and I'm going to search by date modified. And there is the Tower 3B. I throw it in here. And now it's actually looking at the file I threw in there. And it's going to actually, it's going to uh, modify it and build it as we go. So here's our Tower 3B object. I throw it in here. Looks great. Now, let me show you something that's really cool about this. So let's go back into uh, 3D Coat. Let's say File. And it's open. And I'm going to open that file that we just, not the, the one that we just imported. So it's going to be in our Unity Projects. Let's see. Here, Assets, Test. There it is. So I'm going to open that. And there it is. Now I'm going to change this top one, right? So I'm going to pick another color. I'm going to go to my Smart Materials, turn these off, hit the close button there. Let's pick a color up here. Let's say uh, this. Let's take this. Make sure that our paintbrush is a solid paintbrush here. All my number is 100%. Click on this. It's reflective. Good. That's fine. Um, and then I'm going to say File. And I'm going to save. Let's save that. Okay. Now, going back to here. Basically, it automatically updates. So that's one of the really nice things is that you can actually generate, you know, you can actually generate your textures in 3D code, and then you just save that back in as long as you're saving to this file, this tower.3b file in the assets folder under the test. In this, in my case, it's going to update. So that's that's really good news. That's a great workflow enhancement. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm going to shut down this part one of the video, uh, but I need to go over uh, just uh, a couple things. One is that when we imported this file into 3D Coat, it made three different texture maps. Uh, if I get any more complex of a file uh, here, if I radius these cubes and export it, I'll only get one texture map. That's a bug on 3D Coat. I'm going to show you a workaround on that. Uh, in the next video. So thanks for watching and then we'll uh, we'll catch up in the next video.